Now that it's 25 years since I walked out of that trailer the first time on those cold streets in Philadelphia, and I knew this was like the moment of truth. And they said, Sylvester, are you ready? I said, no, but Rocky is. Hello, YouTube fam. This is Lucas, and I hope you're all having an amazing day because we've got a real treat in store for you. You know, sometimes in Hollywood, even the biggest stars have moments of reflection and introspection. Today, we've got something special to talk about. Sylvester Stallone's journey in a brand new Netflix documentary, Sly. Who is this man, I'm Sylvester Stallone? artist, writer, poet, performer. How does that happen? Imagine a career that spans nearly five decades, iconic characters like Rocky and Rambo, and the highs and lows that come with it. In this documentary, Stallone opens up about his regrets, the sacrifices he's made, and the incredible journey that has defined his Hollywood legacy. So, if you're a fan of Sylvester Stallone, or just curious about the behind the scenes of Hollywood's biggest stars, you're in the right place. Do I have regrets? Hell yeah, I have regrets. The Netflix documentary Sly explores the life and career of Sylvester Stallone, delving into his highs and lows in Hollywood over nearly 50 years. The documentary offers an intimate look at the iconic actor, writer, director, and producer. Stallone reflects on his regrets and the sacrifices of his filmmaking journey. Directed by Tom Zimney, a renowned filmmaker celebrated for his music documentaries, takes the helm as the director of Sly. He's best known for his collaboration with the legendary Bruce Springsteen, and now he's brought his storytelling prowess to the life and career of Sylvester Stallone. On the other hand, Sean Stewart, a seasoned producer and filmmaker, Maker, joins forces with Stallone to bring Sly to the screen. Stewart's role in this documentary is crucial, ensuring that every aspect of this cinematic journey is meticulously crafted. Together, Zimney and Stewart create a documentary that offers us an intimate glimpse into the life and career of one of Hollywood's most iconic figures, Sylvester Stallone. Let's begin by delving into the early chapters of Sylvester Stallone's life, where he encountered a period of homelessness and financial challenges at the outset of his career. Prior to attaining fame as both an actor and screenwriter, Stallone grappled with the difficulties of making a living. After Lords of Flatbush, I decided it was a time to come to California. So I went to California, and I moved in the valley, and things weren't going very, very well there. The story goes that Stallone arrived in New York City in the early 1970s with dreams of becoming an actor. However, he faced numerous rejections and financial difficulties. At one point, he found himself homeless and sleeping in a bus station for several days. During this challenging time, he was offered a small role in a softcore adult film called The Party at Kitty and Studs, which he accepted due to his desperate financial situation. In the early 1970s, Stallone was struggling to make a name for himself in the film industry. He was virtually broke and had to make a difficult decision. He couldn't afford to take care of his beloved bull mastiff Butkus and provide for himself at the same time. So, Stallone made the painful choice to sell his dog. He sold Butkus to a man he thought would provide a good home for the dog. However, after selling Butkus, Stallone's circumstances began to change for the better. He wrote the script for Rocky, which would go on to become a blockbuster hit in 1976 and catapult him to fame. With the success of Rocky, Stallone's financial situation improved significantly, and he found himself in a position to buy back his beloved dog, Butkus. He reportedly searched for the person he had sold the dog to, and eventually managed to buy Butkus back for $15,000, which was a substantial sum at the time. Finally, I get the job. I go back to the fellow I sold it to, who now won't give it back. So that he paid me like 60 bucks for the dog. He goes, I'll, I'll give you the dog back for 3000 I said, I don't have $3,000. He goes, all right, I want to be in the movie. So I put him in the movie. Sylvester Stallone and Butkus were reunited, and the dog even made appearances in some of Stallone's films, including Rocky and Rocky II. Sadly, Butkus later died from a heart attack in 1981 at the age of 12 years old. Sylvester Stallone's breakthrough arrived when he was struck with the inspiration to craft the screenplay for Rocky. Astonishingly, he penned the entire script in just three days, unwaveringly determined to cast himself in the leading role, despite tempting offers from studios willing to purchase the script without him as the star. The resolute Stallone's insistence on playing the character he had so passionately brought to life ultimately paid off, as Rocky ascended to monumental success. The movie earned Stallone a pair of Academy Award nominations and solidified his status as a genuine Hollywood sensation. Intriguingly, it secured three Oscars, one each for Best Picture, Best Director, and Best Editing. However, to Stallone's disappointment, he couldn't clinch the award he was nominated for, Best Actor, despite being the frontrunner. By the time I turned for the third flight, the entire audience was down there. There was 900 people waiting, and they started to applaud, and I mean truly applaud. And I said, how could you doubt me, Mom? I'm shocked. 
<laughs> After watching a Rocky movie, many people left the theaters with a burning desire to be like Rocky Balboa. The impact of the film is so profound that it lingers long after the credits roll. People found themselves replaying Rocky's iconic workout scenes in their minds, the sweat-soaked training sessions, and the legendary music like Eye of the Tiger echoing in their ears. The movies tap into a deep well of inspiration, making individuals yearn to lace up their own boxing gloves, hit the gym, and strive for peak physical fitness. Dude, when Rocky came out, I think I was seven, and uh, I drank raw eggs and ran around the block, and I told Sylvester I Stallone that. I don't doubt that. <laughs> Ultimately, a breakthrough materialized when Erwin Winkler and Robert Chardoff extended an offer to acquire the script, under the condition that Stallone would not assume the starring role. Although the offer held substantial financial allure, particularly given Stallone's financial struggles at the time, he declined. His unwavering faith in his vision and his capability to authentically portray Rocky Balboa would not waver. In the end, Winkler and Chardoff relented, taking a calculated gamble on an unproven actor by allowing Stallone to inhabit the lead role. This audacious decision would prove to be one of the most astute in the annals of cinema. Rocky Meta morphed into a cultural sensation, and received critical acclaim. Stallone's steadfast commitment to his artistic convictions and his willingness to forego lucrative offers underscored a remarkable narrative of unwavering determination and resiliency within the realm of Tinseltown. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place, and I don't care how tough you are, it will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. Sylvester Stallone's career took an intriguing turn after his iconic portrayal of Rocky Balboa. While the Rocky franchise continued with several sequels, Stallone ventured into a diverse range of film projects that showcased his versatility as an actor and filmmaker. Notable among these was his portrayal of John Rambo in the action-packed First Blood series, which solidified his status as an action hero. Stallone also explored the world of comedy with the memorable character of Marion Cabretti in Cobra, and delved into science fiction with Demolition Man. His work in Cliffhanger and The Specialist further demonstrated his ability to excel in high-octane thrillers. Beyond acting, Stallone also wrote and directed films like Staying Alive and The Expendables, creating a lasting impact on Hollywood's action genre, while continuing to surprise and entertain audiences with his diverse filmography. You walked into that one. <laughs> As we find ourselves in the heart of the video, let's ignite our inner Stallone spirit for some motivational vibes. Just like Rocky, when life throws a curveball, keep that fighting spirit alive. If you're enjoying the content, show us some love by hitting the like button, dropping a comment, and subscribing. Don't forget to ring that notification bell with the same gusto as Sly himself. Now grab your popcorn, settle in, and let's journey further into the world of Sylvester Stallone. Fun fact, Sylvester Stallone's distinctive drooping lower lip, which has become one of his trademark facial features, is the result of a facial injury he sustained during childbirth. Stallone was born on July 6, 1946, in New York City, and during the delivery, the forceps used to assist in his birth accidentally severed a nerve in his face. This injury caused partial paralysis on the left side of his face, giving him the characteristic slurred speech and drooping lip. Growing up with this facial asymmetry, Stallone faced many challenges and insecurities, but learned to embrace his unique appearance. In fact, his facial differences became an integral part of his persona as an actor, setting him apart from other Hollywood stars and contributing to his iconic image. So now, I'm taking this to the next level! Sylvester Stallone has been married three times and has several children from his marriages. Here's a brief overview of his marriages and children. First marriage 1974 to 1985, Sylvester Stallone's first wife was Sasha Chack. They met in 1971 and got married in 1974. Together they had two sons, Sage Stallone, 1976 to 2012. Sage followed in his father's footsteps as an actor and appeared in several films. Sadly, Sage Stallone passed away on July 13, 2012. He died at the age of 36. Sage Stallone was an actor and filmmaker, known for his roles in movies such as Rocky V, where he played the son of his father's iconic character, Rocky Balboa. His untimely death was a tragic loss for his family. Sergio Stallone, born in 1979. Sergio was diagnosed with autism at a young age, and his privacy has been closely guarded by his family. His second marriage, 1985 to 1987. After divorcing Sasha Jack in 1985, Stallone married Bridget Nielsen his co-star from the film Cobra. This marriage was short-lived and ended in divorce in 1987, his third marriage in 1997. Present, Sylvester Stallone's third and current wife is Jennifer Flavin, whom he met in 1988. 
They dated on and off for several years before tying the knot in 1997. Jennifer Flavin is a former model and entrepreneur. The couple has three daughters together. Sophia Rose Stallone, Sistine Rose Stallone, Scarlett Rose Stallone, Sylvester Stallone and Jennifer Flavin have been together for several decades, and their marriage has remained strong despite the challenges that can come with a high-profile Hollywood career. Their daughters have pursued various interests, including modeling and other artistic endeavors. Stallone's family life has been an important part of his personal journey, and he has often spoken about the significance of family and the support he receives from his wife and children in his life and career. But what about his ultimate rival Arnold Schwarzenegger? Sylvester Stallone and Arnold Schwarzenegger, two of the most iconic action stars in Hollywood history, have often been portrayed in the media as rivals, but their relationship has evolved over the years, encompassing both competition and friendship. And then I lose best act, I'm going, Jesus, this is a nightmare. And I see him kind of like, <laughs> in the 1980s and 1990s, Sylvester Stallone and Arnold Schwarzenegger were indeed considered rivals in the action movie genre. Both actors were known for their macho, larger-than-life characters and starred in numerous successful action films. This rivalry was fueled by the media and fans who often compared their careers and box office successes. Despite the rivalry, both Stallone and Schwarzenegger have spoken about their mutual respect and friendly competition. They pushed each other to excel in their careers and this rivalry likely contributed to the success of their respective films. In the 80s, he was just a rival. Just a rival. Just, it was just competition. It was all about who is uh, making bigger movies, who has uh, uh, more definition in their muscles, mm -hmm. who has more box office success. In 2010, the two actors appeared together in the film The Expendables, which Stallone wrote and directed. This marked a significant moment in their careers as it was the first time they shared substantial screen time in a movie. This collaboration was seen as a symbol of their mutual respect and the end of any perceived rivalry. Over the years, Stallone and Schwarzenegger have developed a genuine friendship. They've been known to support each other's projects. Their friendship became more apparent as they shared their personal experiences and challenges in the film industry. Stallone and Schwarzenegger have also appeared together in sequels to The Expendables franchise. Although Sylvester Stallone has taken a step back from the Rocky franchise, his career continues to thrive, even at the age of 77. He's recently appeared in Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 3 and is gearing up for his role in the upcoming Expendables. As we wrap up today's discussion on the documentary Sly, I just want to say, Yo, Adrian! Adrian! Thank you so much for joining me on this incredible journey through the world of entertainment and all things Sylvester Stallone. Don't forget to hit that like button if you found this video insightful. And if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel for more engaging content on your favorite stars and entertainment news. Are you excited to watch Sly? What's your favorite Sylvester Stallone movie? Share your thoughts and comments down below. We can't wait to hear from you. Thank you so much for joining me today. Until next time, keep exploring the Flick universe with us. If I can take my frustration and voice it, I have a funny feeling that there's millions of people that have that same frustration that were overlooked. <laughs>